The Ukrainians have won the fight for their capital city of Kyiv. Now Russian troops are gathering to attack the east in what's expected to be the biggest battle of the war. President Putin is doubling down on his brutality, appointing the butcher of Syria as his new military commander. Dale Hurd begins our coverage. Having failed to take the capital of Kyiv, Russian forces are preparing for what could be a major showdown with Ukrainian forces in the east. New satellite images show a massive military convoy of tanks, artillery and other vehicles eight miles long now heading toward the nation's second largest city, Kharkiv, already partially leveled after weeks of Russian shelling. It's Vladimir Putin's plan B after his forces were repulsed from the capital. The Russians lost and the Ukrainians won the battle for Kyiv. Kyiv stands despite Russia's effort to conquer the capital city of their neighbor. A sign of the Russian defeat at Kyiv is Vladimir Putin's appointment of a new commander in Ukraine, General Alexander Dvornikov, notorious for leading Russia's brutal campaign in Syria in 2015. Retired General David Petraeus says Dvornikov is known as the butcher of Syria. The hallmark of the Russian forces so far has been indiscipline, not discipline. It has been violation. Uh, of the Geneva Convention and the land, law of land warfare and so forth. In a show of solidarity over the weekend, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson walked the streets of Kyiv with Ukrainian President Zelensky. The White House says there's no plan for Joe Biden to visit. According to the UN, more than 10 million Ukrainians have fled their homes since the Russian invasion began. One quarter of them are now in Poland. CBN News reporter Wendy Griffith has the latest from the Polish border. The faces are many. The stories heartbreaking. But Ukrainians from all walks of life keep pouring over the border into Poland, hoping to find a peaceful place to wait out the war that's ravaging their country. Today here at the border, it's been raining pretty much all day, and people have been coming here to the Operation Blessing tent to get warm and something hot to drink. Come inside and I'll show you. Oksana, her 13-year-old son and disabled father, arrived at the border in the pouring rain after fleeing Donetsk, a city in eastern Ukraine, now considered a main target of Russia's military. Her 21-year-old son and husband stayed in Ukraine to defend their country. Uh, it's really hard and I'm uh, afraid about them. I'm really, really worried about them. Dennis, a 40-year-old single dad, fled Kharkiv, another area hit hard by Russian shelling. After living in his basement for a month, he's been raising his son alone since his wife died a year and a half ago. It was too dangerous to go outside because there were like uh, constant bombing. Uh, so, of course, it was really hard, but somehow we felt like protected. Although he arrived at the Operation Blessing tent cold, wet, and hungry, Dennis left full and dry thanks to a new coat plus a brand new suitcase to put his belongings in. And that crying baby, smiling and content after being rocked to sleep by an Operation Blessing volunteer. After the sounds of war started giving her three young sons nightmares, Marina, also from eastern Ukraine, decided to flee as well, leaving behind an older son and husband to defend the homeland. Marina, tell me why you left your town. The Russians were bombing. It was war. It was really horrible. Do you know where you'll stay tonight? We don't know exactly where we are staying, but we are relying on volunteers to help us. We don't want to go back to Ukraine right now. Oksana, Dennis and Marina were also happy to receive prayer. Amen. And thankful that someone like Operation Blessing was there in their time of need. Wendy Griffith, CBN News, on the Polish-Ukrainian border. If you want to be there for these refugees in their time of need, it's real simple. All you have to do is pick up the phone and say, I want to give to the Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund. 
You can write to us at CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463. Just put Operation Blessing Disaster Relief Fund in the memo line of the check. You can text us, OB Crisis, text OB Crisis to 71777, or you can go to CBN.com. Be part of helping those uh, refugees in their time of need. They're literally leaving with nothing. They have just the clothes on their backs and uh, a few possessions, uh, you know, to see them through. They have no way of making any income on the Polish side of that border. Uh, and we want to help them. We want to provide food. We want to provide water. We want to provide shelter for them. And we're doing it in your name when you give. So give now. 1-800-700-7000. In other news, Israeli defense forces are striking back against a recent wave of terror. John Jessup has more on that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? That is right, Gordon. Prime Minister Naftali Bennett announced Israel is going on the offensive after four attacks killed 14 Israelis. Soldiers from the Israel Defense Forces carried out operations in the West Bank town of Jenin and surrounding areas over the weekend. The IDF killed one Palestinian militant and shot two brothers of the terrorist who killed three people last week in Tel Aviv. In the city of Nablus, about 100 Palestinians attacked a Jewish holy site, Joseph's tomb, revered by Jews who believe the biblical patriarch is buried there. The mob damaged and set fire to the site, before being dispersed by security forces. Well, turning to our economy here at home and the majority of Americans who believe it's in bad shape. In a recent CBS News poll, 63% rated the economy as bad. 86% blamed inflation. 66% said higher prices have been a hardship on them and their families. This, as economic experts warn, a recession may be on the horizon with Bank of America analysts predicting an economic slowdown. On NBC's Meet the Press, former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers said historic indicators do point to a recession. The painful fact, uh, though, is that historically, when we've had inflation above four and we've had unemployment below four, essentially always since World War II, that's been followed by a recession within the next two years. Recession is defined as two consecutive quarters of the economy shrinking. While as Americans suffer the pressure of high pump prices, churches across the country are partnering with gas stations to help ease the burden, providing free or discounted gas. And as Charlene Aaron reports, one pastor also sees it as a way to accelerate the gospel. Yeah, I believe that the life of the Christian should be a life that's overflowing with compassion. And Pastor Brian Karn of Kingdom City Church in Charlotte put his compassion on display by hosting this Gas on God event for members of his community. He told CBN's prayer link that while his church's gas outreach is ongoing, this year it's even more significant, with gas prices reaching record highs. We were just faithfully doing it over the last couple of years, and it actually came in handy this year in a powerful way. More than 300 people received free gas through the church's partnership with a local mobile gas station. The ministry also distributed grocery vouchers and gift cards, as well as drive-up prayer. People were actually running out of gas coming to the gas station. and We were having to push their cars to the gas station. Members of Kingdom City Church pumped gas for drivers so they could sit in their cars while also being filled with ministry and prayer. I drove about 25 minutes to get over here for this tank of gas. Everyone was pleasant, and I just really appreciate everything you guys have done for me and everyone out here today. Pastor Karn personally financed the entire event, donating $10,000 for the outreach. It was a seed for me into the lives of people all over the city of Charlotte so that I can let them know that, uh, so that God could use me as a conduit uh, to let them know that God cares about your tank as much as he cares about your pocket or your heart. Meanwhile, with high prices on everything from fuel to food, Pastor Karn says now is an opportunity for the church to share the gospel like never before. To be able to use that as a tool to get people saved, to pray for people, get people healed and delivered. You know, Jesus fed them first and then he ministered to them. So that was our, that was our fishing blows. It was gas and changing lives in the process.
some people crying, some people weeping, some people couldn't believe it. And you know, the result was people came to church, lives were touched, people's lives were changed. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. In Kingdom City and other churches putting a whole new spin on the idea of convenience. Gordon? Well, they're definitely getting out into the marketplace, which is exactly what the disciples did. They went to the marketplaces uh, in order to preach the gospel. And here we are in, in 2022, we're going to the gas marketplace and saying, here, uh, we understand the hard times. We understand the price of gas has gone way up. Uh, we want to help you. That's the church being the church. It's not just a building. It's an outreach to the community, an outreach to the marketplace. Well, here's a stat you may not know. Black women are three times more likely to die from pregnancy-related causes than white women. And this week is being called Black Maternal Health Week, We're having an effort to raise awareness of the issue. Medical reporter Lori Johnson explains what's at stake and what's being done to help save lives. Ears. Many people don't realize African-American women have a greater risk in the earliest stages of motherhood. Even black women themselves, like Danielle Bryant, are too often unaware of the threats. So I had never associated a life-threatening situation with pregnancy and delivery. Danielle learned the truth firsthand as she was rushed to the hospital in labor at just six and a half months pregnant. I had internal bleeding that was not controllable. I had 23 transfusions, and my son, unfortunately, suffered some brain damage. Danielle's mother stayed by her daughter's side. And I immediately started calling people to pray, to pray with me and to pray for her, um, because I realized that something serious was going on and, find, and found out later that she was at death's door. The CDC says black women face unusual hardships when it comes to having a baby, regardless of income or education. We know that black women are three times more likely to die from a pregnancy-related cause than white women. And black women are also significantly more likely to have a severe health complication at the time of delivery. It's just really important for us to understand that these pregnancy-related deaths Two out of three are preventable. Two all too common conditions among black women that need to be addressed are fibroids, benign uterine tumors that can cause severe bleeding, and preeclampsia, high blood pressure that can be fatal. Black women can also suffer a premature deterioration of overall health due to chronic race-based stress. And we know that these historical disadvantages that are experienced for Black and Native American women sort of weigh on them over time to something that's called a weathering hypothesis. Studies show Black infants are more likely than white babies to be stillborn, born premature with low birth weight, and to die before their first birthday. Those born before 32 weeks also experience more brain issues. Not all hospitals offer the same level of service. 75% of African-American women give birth at hospitals that serve predominantly black populations. And as it turns out, these hospitals generally provide lower quality maternal care. Patient studies and experiences also point to racism among some health care providers. I have experienced uh, bias and uh, racial bias, and I have um, a stillborn, I had a stillborn child. Her name was Kennedy. And when I was pregnant with my second daughter, who did survive, Riley, I experienced so much bias that I had to switch doctors in the middle of my pregnancy at six months. Her loss prompted Heather Wilson to start a nonprofit called Kennedy's Angel Gowns, making burial clothes for babies lost during pregnancy. And the prejudice she felt made her reach out on social media to see if other black moms could relate. Overwhelmed by responses, Heather started an online support group. When you reach out and, and women are having the same exact experiences, you can't help but think this is not a coincidence. 
A 2016 study published in the Proceedings of the National Academies of Science revealed half of medical students and resident physicians held false beliefs, such as black people's nerve endings are less sensitive, skin is thicker, and blood coagulates more than white people's. In 2021, Wilson joined a Black Maternal Health Roundtable discussion with Vice President Kamala Harris. What's the source of the anger and the sadness and what, what are those conversations? Heard. Not being is the, is the number one thing I hear is I'm, they're not listening to me. And oftentimes it's, it's too late. The Biden administration has proposed increased spending to improve black maternal health, such as providing Medicaid coverage for up to a year after giving birth and paying for personal advocacy workers called doulas. Since that proposal was part of the defeated Build Back Better bill, its future remains uncertain. Meanwhile, medical schools now incorporate anti-bias training into their curriculum, and many healthcare agencies take advantage of free online courses offered through the Health and Human Services Department. Elsewhere, the CDC website offers lots of pregnancy-related information for black women, such as how to recognize warning signs and guidelines to choosing the right hospital and doctor. You have the right to interview your doctors, ask them the questions that you need to know. I would even ask, you know, especially as a black woman, what kind of experiences have you seen do you have with people like me? So while these various issues facing black women can lead to devastating consequences, African-American mothers are drawing attention to their plight and are fighting for change. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Well, you look at this, and, and for those who think there's no racism in America, please think again. But I'll say it, and I've said it before, I'll say it again. There's only one race, and it's called the human race. And it's as old as Shakespeare. If you cut us, do we not bleed? Can we please get to a medical community that treats all people equally, that doesn't think so certain types of people have different responses to pain or can take more pain than others or anything like that? Let us make sure that we have equality in our medical care. Pet Boone's storied career includes dozens of hits and millions of records sold. At one concert, his opening act was a kid from Tennessee named Elvis Presley. Later, he was offered the chance to play the on-screen love interest to Marilyn Monroe. He turned it down. For a person who has achieved megastardom, Pat's newest movie may seem a little odd. That's because it's about a man hoping to get a do-over in life. Pat Boone is a rare legend in his own time, a star of movies, TV, and Broadway, a recording artist who sold some 45 million records. Now in his 80s, Pat has yet another new movie coming out, The Mulligan. How do you see yourself? Not just in golf, but your whole existence, your life. Pat plays the old pro who knows even more about life than the game, and it makes all the difference. It's about believing. This never was about golf, was it? I think my work here is done. Our good friend Pat Boone joins us now via Skype. Pat, it's so nice to have you on the program today. Well, great to be with you, Terry, and on the program, of course, but with you anytime, like we were in Israel long ago. Many times in Israel, you're correct. Well, I want to ask you, how does it feel for you, a former teen superstar, to now come full circle, and now you're playing the seasoned wise pro in this movie? <laughs> well, uh, I, the casting directors in Hollywood, have, the word's gone out. If you need somebody to play an 80-year-old who can still remember his lines, get Pat Boone. <laughs> uh, and so I've made several movies right, uh, lately. I, another one on Amazon Prime is Miracle in the Valley. And uh, and I not only star in that, but I, I help fund it. And I'm also in the God's Not Dead 2 recently, and uh, you know, the follow up to God's Not Dead, the first one. And, uh, and a couple of other films that I'm not supposed to talk about yet that I'm playing prominent roles in. So it's, it's wild to me 
uh, because I don't recognize myself in the mirror. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've, know. Changed, <laughs> I've changed so drastically that, and yet people still remember and they recognize me and, and they still want a little more of the old guy. So I'm delighted to comply. Well, in the producers of The Mulligan, which is this, this film we're talking about today that you're in, said that when they thought about the, the various roles that they needed to find people to play, you were the first and only name that came up for the particular role you're doing. I'm wondering what drew you to this movie. I'm not only flattered by that, I, I know it was the Lord, uh, because uh, this man has already achieved great things in his life. And now he's mentoring younger people who have great potential, but their focus in life is wrong. And this one, um, this one hotshot billionaire from uh, Silicon Valley, whose marriage is busting up, his kids can't stand him, and he's still trying to play golf, uh, is recommended by Tom Lehman, who is one of the tour pros, one of the great pros out there now, and a great uh, Christian is in this film, and recommended that he go see uh, the old pro who can help him get control of his golf and his temperament. And of course, I'm happy to do that, but I'm also interested in his personal life. And, and Terry, you know that me as an entertainer, I've always from the very beginning considered that God gave, gave me this incredible uh, career as a platform from which I could do what I thought I was going to do, which is be a teacher preacher and try to lead young kids to the Lord. That's what I thought I was doing when Shirley and I married at 19. <laughs> and by the time we were 23 and I was graduating from Columbia University, we had four kids already. So we had our family when I first moved to California. And, uh, and fortunately, I was already known as a Christian. I didn't have to come out and tell people I was. That was part of who I, I was known to be. And so from, from then on, I knew that whatever influence I might wield as an entertainer was to be for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've tried to do. Now, I've taken a lot of brick bats and kidding and ridicule along the way. But now lately, in these latter years, I'm, I'm letting a lot of entertainers who tell me they used to make fun of me and jokes and so on, I've come to respect you because you really, you really made it happen, haven't you, with your family, your life, your, your career, your business. And you're still going at 80, 80, I'm, I'm 87 now. I'll be 88 in June. And I worked out in the gym the last couple of days for my new Relief Factor commercials <laughs> so they can see what a, a healthy 86-year-old looks like. Well, there's a part, and I want to say that there's a part in this movie that is particularly, was challenging to you as you thought about it ahead of time because you had to get super emotional. That's always been my thought when I see people who are able to do that is how do they, how do they make that happen? What was going on and how did that happen for you? Well, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I didn't know if I could play that part well because, you know, it really called for uh, the man to break up over the loss of his own child. And, and although it moved me, in, you know, interiorly, I knew I was going to be saying the lines as cameras and I, but when the scene came, eventually, all I had to do was say the words that I knew and apply them to myself. And I'm telling you, something swept over me. And in the course of doing that scene, I was fighting to keep from crying. I wasn't trying to cry. I wasn't thinking about, I was trying not to just break down and sob because of what I was having to say. And it was just God. And, you know, when we finished the scene the first time and it was very still, and quiet. I never heard the director say cut. He just said, very nice. Can we do it again? <laughs> Can we do it again? <laughs> but when I did it again, the same thing happened. As I was saying the words I was supposed to say and meaning them in my heart and identifying with them, something, it was the Holy Spirit just swept over me and I was fighting desperately to keep from crying, though I was crying. And that is sort of the wisdom contained in your new movie, The Mulligan, which I want to let our viewers know hits select theaters nationwide for two nights only. So don't miss it. I read the book. It's well worth your trip to the theater. April 18th and 19th. It's right after Easter. 
Make sure to go to CBN.com if you'd like to find show times, and you can also get tickets there. Pat, thank you for being with us. We just always love having you on. You always bring a wonderful word of wisdom to us. Appreciate you. Thank you, Terry. And I hope people will go see it because, you know, they're not making many good Christian films. And this is a, a Christian film in secular theaters, a thousand of them on those two days. So we can make a real difference. If we'll just go see a good movie, bring our family and, and encourage the movie business to open up and make more good films for families. And get some buttered popcorn in the route. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Pat. Welcome back to Washington for this CBN Newsbreak. Scotty Scheffler continues the hottest streak in golf. The 25-year-old's Sunday Masters Tournament win by three strokes. Since February 13th, he's gone from zero tour victories to four, rocketing to the number one world ranking. After Sunday's win, he shared how his wife responded when he told her he didn't feel prepared for such quick success. She told me, who are you to say that you're not ready? Um, who, who am I to say that I know what's best for, for my life? And so for what we talked about is, you know, that God is in control and, you know, the Lord is leading me. And um, if today's my time, then, then it's my time. Scheffler's rise to number one after his first PG or, uh, PGA win took only 42 days, faster than anyone else, including Tiger Woods, who also competed in the tour. Well, CBN Superbook has reached new milestones, passing 4.4 million subscribers and 1 billion views on its various YouTube channels. Those channels allow children to learn about the Bible by watching full Superbook episodes, as well as other Superbook-themed videos. Many regional YouTube channels feature original content in their own languages. Currently, the top languages include English, Spanish, Portuguese, Russian, Hindi, and Tagalog. Well, you can find out more about what CBN is doing around the world by going to CBN.com slash international. Well, no money, her family running out of food. Myrna was desperate after hurricane rains flooded her home and her crops. Her frightened children were constantly asking her, are we going to die? Myrna lives with her family on a farm in the Yucatan Peninsula. Last year, near hurricane winds and rain from the Gulf of Mexico caused their land and home to flood. My kids could not stop crying. They said, what is going to happen to us? Are we going to die? I didn't know what to do, so I asked God for help. The floodwaters also destroyed most of their crops that they had been growing. They'd planned to use those for food and income. The rain had washed away our crops. All the corn we had planted was gone. Myrna said they had no money to buy new seeds and that the family was now running out of food. After a week of eating only tortillas, I knew my kids needed something else for food. When Operation Blessing learned about the family, we delivered a truckload filled with sacks of food and seeds. We gave several hundred pounds of food staples and seeds to Myrna and 26 other families in her community. Now that we have seeds for our fields, God willing, we'll harvest a lot of food. Thanks to everyone that donated. This has been a blessing and it's been possible because of you. That thank you goes to you if you're a member of the 700 Club. If you're not a member, I invite you to join with us. It's just real simple. All you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000 is the number, and say, I want to join the 700 Club. How much is that? Well, it's $20 a month, and you're joining with tens of thousands of people that say, yes, let's help people in need. Let's do things around the world to bring a blessing. Some of you can give at higher levels. We have 700 Club Gold. That's $40 a month. There's also $84 a month for 1,000 Club. 2500 is 2500 club, $5,000 or more is a CBN founder. Uh, at whatever level God is urging you to give, call us, 1-800-700-7000, or you can go to cbn.com. Now, when you call, make sure you ask for Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving, bank doing all the work. We save on the processing so we can send Power for Life monthly teaching CDs to you. So ask for Pledge Express when you call. 
or go to CBN.com and you give monthly on the internet, you automatically sign up for Pledge Express. There's also a new way to text where you can text the letter CBN to 71777. A monthly giving page will, will show up and again, you'll automatically enroll in Pledge Express. Now, as a special bonus, I've got my father's latest book. When you call and join now, I'll send you The Power of the Holy Spirit in You, where he's distilled 60 years of ministry into one book, how the Holy Spirit has guided him, how my mother and father would get together and pray, ask God for direction. He would speak to them. He would guide them through Scripture. And that's how all the ministry of CBN came to be is them agreeing in prayer, asking God for direction, and receiving an answer. You can know the same principles, apply them to your life. All you have to do is get this, 1-800-700-7000. Call right now. Buck Hornsby went out for his morning walk, and then he crawled away covered in blood. A stranger on the highway had opened fire. Buck took two shotgun blasts to his head. The driver fled and Buck was left fighting for his life. I just remember a lot of burning in my facial area, my sinuses, my neck, side of my head. The pain was excruciating. It was like falling into a black tunnel. Shh, I blacked out, everything went. September 12th, 2017, Buck Hornsby had been enjoying a morning walk near his home in Clinton, Louisiana fully unaware of the danger nearby. Around 60 feet from the highway, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw a car suddenly pull up on the edge of the highway. And as soon as I looked that way, two gunshots. Two shotgun blasts from an unknown attacker left his body riddled with pellets, and Buck fighting for his life. Intense pain set in as he regained consciousness. I lost sight in my right eye automatically, and then the blood started coming from everywhere. I couldn't breathe good. My heart rate was racing. I knew that I had major damage on this side of my body, mainly around my neck and carotid artery. Fueled by adrenaline, Buck tried to reach a nearby house, yet no one was home. Collapsing to the ground, Buck crawled nearly 600 yards to reach his uncle's home. There's somebody banging on the door, and I looked up, and he was at the back door, he was just covered with blood. I opened the door and said, what happened to you? He said, somebody shot me and get me to the hospital. So we jumped in the truck and took off. If the inside looked anything worse than the outside, then he was in trouble. After reaching Baton Rouge General Hospital, Buck was taken in for x-rays to evaluate the extent of his injuries. Buck had nearly 50 pellets lodged throughout his body. The pellets landed in areas that could be life-threatening. The most potentially lethal injury is the proximity of the pellets to the carotid vessel that they overlay. Then a vascular surgeon comes in. <clears throat> he says, Mr. Hornsby, you have uh, serious damage to your carotid artery in your neck. We're going to have to do an MRI. I told him not to give me any pain medication at all because I wanted to be able to talk to my wife and my kids and tell them I love them. I didn't know if I would be there to be able to do that. When Buck's father got the news of his son's injuries, the pastor of over 40 years knew exactly what to do. We started praying right away, and uh, we already had a team in place intercessors that began to pray for Buck and everything that was going on in this whole area, this whole situation. There's a scripture that says there's a peace that passes all understanding. Certain times you don't understand what's going on, but there's a peace that gives you faith to believe that God is going to take care of the situation that you're involved in. 30 minutes after Buck's MRI, the surgeon came back with telling results. He said it could even be a 50-50 chance on you living if this carotid artery would have been penetrated. Had that vessel been pierced by one of the pellets that he could have bled out in a matter of just a couple minutes. 
it's miraculous that he survived this injury. He tells me, you were 16th of an inch from bleeding out on your property and not being here. And he says, you are a true miracle. So I was thankful. Doctors removed what pellets they could, treated his wounds, and sent Buck home to recover the very same day. I just want to thank God for his faithfulness to us and to our family. We know that prayer can change things in your life. There was probably close to 100,000 people praying for me, and that really meant a lot to me. I believe God intervened through those prayers. Buck's attacker was later apprehended and charged with the serial murders of three other men in the area, all who were similarly targeted like Buck. A lot of anger built up in me because of the pain and suffering inflicted on these people for no reason. But I know that God had his hand on me, so there's no way I could hold any grudge or be anger, angry at him in any way. Though there's no explanation for the senseless attacks, Buck takes comfort in placing his trust in something he knows for certain, the goodness of God. The word of God is true. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. 62 feet, and the doctor tells me I'm a 16th of an inch from dying. And I know if I'd have been walking and jogging, I'd have been 20 feet from the highway, and I, I wouldn't be here. I truly believe God had his hand on me. That's why I'm talking to you today. This life is just a vapor. And if you live that way and you trust God, oh, death, where is thy sting? Amazing miracle story. Here, here's a scripture that came to mind. Uh, God is a very present help in time of need. How can you explain this need? How can you explain a serial killer? Uh, how can you explain uh, just how precisely he's standing so that these um, shotgun blasts don't kill him on the spot? How can you explain these things outside of God is our very present help in time of need? Did God cause the attack? No. Uh, someone with the exercising his free will to do evil did exactly that. But here's God, and he's acting on Buck's behalf. He's being a very present help in Buck's time of need. And from this story, you can get encouragement that he'll be your very present help in your time of need. You know, is God sovereign? Yes. But in that sovereignty, there are a couple of things that are happening. One, time and circumstance happen to us all. Two, acts of free will happen to us all. Is God behind either one of those things? The answer is no. But he's there, and he's there to provide protection. He's there to provide healing. He's very, there to provide a very present help in your time of need. All you have to do is to lean into him. Now, Buck could have very easily complained. He could have very, very easily said, God, why did you allow this to happen? He didn't do that. What he did is he praised God for being that very present help and gives us the pathway to get the same kind of relief. Come to him with thanksgiving, not for the problem, for, for his solution to your problem, praise him for it. And in that praise, you'll find that pathway. He inhabits the praises of his people. Isn't that wonderful? He gives us the very key to getting a miracle. Come to him, worship him, thank him for all the things that he's done. Thank him for all the things he's about to do, and you'll get a miracle. Now, Terry and I are going to pray for you. Before we pray, we've got some other answers to prayer. Here's Reba from Alabama. She lost her grandmother. She lost her mother. And she became extremely depressed, felt a darkness weighing on her down like a wet blanket. While she was watching this show, Terry said, someone's suffering from depression. 
the oil of joy for mourning is coming over you right now. It's gone. That veil, that darkness, rejoice in the Lord. You have been set free from that. Well, knowing the prayer was for her, Reba thanked God. Again, the key, thank God. And then darkness left, joy returned, and she is praising God. That's wonderful. This is Alberta. She lives in Tampa, Florida. Started suffering from severe headaches after her cancer treatment ended last November. She was watching this program on February 18th this year. And Gordon, she heard you say there's someone touching your forehead with your fingertips and you have had tremendous headaches. They just left you. Just raise your hands to God and just praise him. They will never return. By faith, Alberta thanked God for healing her. The headaches disappeared. She's giving all glory to the Lord. Let's do that. Let's thank him and let's praise him. Let's come and worship him and realize that's the key to miracles. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you. We come to you with thanksgiving for who you are that when we're faithless, you remain faithful. You cannot deny yourself. When we're without hope, you're the God of all hope. So, Lord, we come to you believing, with thanksgiving for what you're about to do, with thanksgiving for all the things that you've done, how you've given us life, how you've given us breath, how you've given us this wonderful place, this wonderful planet to live on. You've provided all these wonderful things for us. We thank you for it. And now we thank you for healing our disease. We thank you for forgiving all our trespasses. We thank you, Lord God Almighty. And we ask now that you would stretch forth your hand to do miracles, signs, and wonders. We praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Uh, there's someone, uh, you've got a growth on your pituitary gland, and it's, it's literally wreaking havoc on your health and on your life. God is taking that growth away. You've been tested. You know there's a growth, and that's why you know this word is specifically for you. That growth is melting away. It's disappearing Go back and get retested. You've been dramatically and wonderfully healed of it. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Tara? Yeah, there's someone else. You've aspirated something um, that's gone into your lung, and now you have an infection that's been hard to control. God's healing that condition for you right now. The infection is going to dissipate. Your lung is going to be healthy. You'll not have any more trouble with this in Jesus' name. Uh, there's someone you're having tremendous pressure in your left eye. Uh, I think it's from an injury, but you've got headaches, blurred vision. Um, uh, I think some of the bones have been crushed. God is healing you. He's, he's taken away all of that. He's given you back your eyesight. That pain just left you now. He's giving you everything that you've lost is being restored now in Jesus' name. Yeah, there's someone else. You have arthritis in your hands. You've used them for your work. I don't know what you did, but you've used them a, a lot during your life. And now at this point in your life, you're just, it's hard to do simple things. And the pain is pretty excruciating. God is healing that for you. Lift up those hands that have been broken and aching to the Lord and begin to praise him. And as you do, the pain will leave in Jesus' name. Uh, there's someone you've got prostate cancer and You've just been diagnosed with it, and you just don't know what to do. Raise your hands to him and, and just thank him for the healing he's providing for you right now. And go back and get retested. Go back and see. But all of the uh, anxiety, all of the worry, all of that uh, concern for life and for future, just let it, just give it to God. Give it all to him. Just turn it all over to him. He is going to see you through. He's going to take care of this for you in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for all that you do, all that you are, that you provided a way of salvation, that you were the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth, that your plan and your purpose will never be denied. We thank you for all that you're doing and all that you are. In Jesus' name.
Amen and amen. If you've been healed, let us know. Uh, let us share in your good report. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. If you need healing, we're here for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we believe in prevailing prayer. That's the prayer that doesn't give up and gets an answer. Mm -hmm. So we've got just Time a for minute a for a quick email question. This is Angela who says, can you explain Luke 21, 24? What does it mean that Jerusalem will be trampled on mm -hmm. by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled? Oh, I got 40 seconds. Um, <laughs> uh, at the time Jesus said that, Jerusalem was being trampled under the foot of the Romans. And uh, then it got real serious in AD 70. And from that point forward until 1967, Jerusalem was in the control of the Gentiles. You can still argue that the Temple Mount is under the control of the Muslims and the Muslims Authority, Temple Mount Authority. So it still hasn't come to pass, but we're really close. That's what that means. Here we leave you with the word from Hebrews. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me?